Super Bowl 39 and the 2005 Daytona 500. This is Fox Sports. Hi, welcome. This is my kingdom, and everything I need is right here. Well, that is everything I need when the football game is on. I got my beer, my snacks, got my recliner, and I got my TV. Of course, every once in a while, I actually leave the garage kingdom, but only to get more stuff or maybe even go to a game. So, life is pretty good. From the beginning of August to the end of January, life is pretty good. But I'm telling you, man, once February rolls around, I get really, really grumpy. Really. Why? Why, you ask? No football. Nothing. No scores, no highlights, no blocking, no tackling. Surf through the channels and there's nobody talking about football. Okay, yes, I watch the indoor stuff, and yes, it keeps me interested for like 10 minutes. But what I want to watch is football. The kind of football that I spend most of my time caring about. The kind of football that I watch when I'm sitting on my throne in my kingdom. How come I can learn how to build a gazebo on some channel or bake a souffle or faux paint my house. I don't even know what a gazebo souffle or faux paint is. But finally, football is back. We got Joe Gibbs back in D.C. with Brunel at quarterback. We got Terrell Owens flying with the Eagles. We got Tuna reunited with Vinny Testaverde in Dallas. And we got Carson Palmer starting in Cincy. But most of all, we got football. Football should be on TV all the time. I love football and I watch TV all the time. And what I really want to see on my TV is football. So, I'm going to be talking about football from right here in my garage kingdom. And not everything I say will be music to the ears of all football people. But I'm a serious football fan myself, and I know a thing or two about the game. And there are some things that I just need to get off my chest. And believe me, I will. Uh, sorry for ranting. In two minutes, it's football's most animated pregame show. It's the one and only Ford Fox NFL Sunday. The one and only Ford Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By WebMD, redefining modern medicine. By Singular, the wireless company that fits you best. And by the next Ford Super Duty. Smarter, stronger, tougher. The next Super Duty. Built Ford Tough. Well, folks, it's kickoff weekend in the NFL, and the atmosphere is indeed electric as we get set for season number 11 of Fox NFL Sunday. And hello again, everyone. I'm James Brown. You know, Terry Bradshaw was working his laptop feverishly last night and came up with this nugget. With the exception of The Simpsons, Cops, and America's Most Wanted, we, or as Terry likes to call it, his show, the longest-running show on Fox. And joining me now, the guys who we hear from the very beginning, 10 years ago, they'll be taking you all the way through Super Bowl 39. TB, Howie Long, and Jimmy Johnson, he likes to say he hired us, he can fire us. Not true, folks. I'm not like that. <laughs> Quit oh, that. You're giving a false impression. He's, all, he's <laughs> always been in a fantasy world. You have what did an he age, say? You have an age say? Thank you. All right, folks. By the way, much love to four for sponsoring us once again this year. And keep in mind, Pam Oliver will sit down with Redskins coach Joe Gibbs later in the program. Good All right. Truck. We have four early games here on Fox, and we begin with our new look Fox Watch. Brian Baldinger is in Chicago for today's Lions Bears matchup. Tim Ryan will be analyzing the Seahawks and Saints. Former Chiefs defensive back J.C. Pearson is in St. Louis for the Cards-Rams game. And Chris Collinsworth, who, along with Troy Aikman, will be checking out Joe Gibbs' debut in Washington. And we start with Chris. Hey, Chris, obviously the talk prior to that game has been all about changes. So how is John Gruden dealing with his 22 or so new free agents? Well, I don't think the number of free agents is so much of a big deal. Remember, they had over 20 free agents the year that they won the Super Bowl. But the fact that this class of free agents really hasn't had much of a chance to work together, JB, so far. John Gruden was telling us, he said, well, me worried? Well, yeah, we've had three or four practices together, maybe 15 snaps in a preseason game. That's really what he's most concerned about. Chris, you look good, buddy. I can tell you've been pumping iron. Keep it up. <laughs> Thank you, brother. If there's one Clinton that both parties really do like, it's Clinton Portis. But can Joe Gibbs, with his offensive line problems, Jansen going out with an injury and he's gone for the year, can Joe Gibbs and a rookie H-back, can they protect Mark Brunel like, they, like Gibbs teams like to do? You know, Terry, if they don't do anything else, they are going to protect Mark Brunel. Joe Gibbs' philosophy from day one is, I don't care if we do 
anything in this ball game. I promise you, we will not get our quarterback hit. Simeon Rice was saying that even in practice, he couldn't get through the blocking scheme. And here's a guy that last season against the Redskins had four sacks in that game. So absolutely, they will get him protected. Hey, Chris, Terry, obviously running on the independent ticket, looking for votes right now. Hey, Chris, thank you very much. From Washington, we head west to St. Louis and J.C. Pearson. J.C., the question is, is Marshall Falk 100% and does he still have a lot of juice left in the tank? Well, I think he does, JB, and he says that he is 100%, in fact, for the first time in the last couple of years, and he's ready to roll. But I think what's really going to help Marshall Falk this year is they've got him some help. They went out and they drafted Steven Jackson in the first round. He's going to get some carries today, and what that means for Marshall is he's going to be a lot fresher late in the ball game. Hey, J.C., I, you know what? I respect Denny Green, and he's got a tough job. But I, I, I don't know what he was saying or what he was thinking when he said that jo Josh McCown, his quarterback, reminded him of a young Brett Favre. What do you, what's your take on that? Well, of course, he wants to give Josh some confidence. And when it, one of the things that he did when he first came was say, Josh, you're my guy. You're the guy that's going to take us where we need to go. But it's a bit risky because Josh McCown is still a young, relatively inexperienced guy. But what Denny really likes about McCown is they, he calls him a gunslinger. He's going to throw the ball all over the football field. And when there's nothing there, he's going to pull it down and run. And that's something that Arizona hasn't had since Jake Plummer. All right, J.C., Terry Bradshaw knows about encouragement. We call him Olivier as an actor. <laughs> hey, from St. Louis, we head down the Mississippi to the Big Easy and Tim Ryan. Everyone's talking about the Seahawks as a Super Bowl contender. Tim, the question is, are you one of those on the Seahawk bandwagon? Well, J.B., I am on the bandwagon, but the bandwagon to only win the division. The conference, I'm still skeptical. I mean, this team has, has got some issues, and it's real simple. They've got to win on the road, and that starts today here in New Orleans. And if they can string some good road wins together, we know how good they are at home, and somehow garner some home field games during the playoffs, anything can happen with Mike Holmgren's football team. Hey, Tim, just slap, my, just slap me silly, because I love it when John Fox said that New Orleans had the best talent in the division. Just love that, don't you, when you're getting ready to play them. But having said that from him how about brooks aaron brooks a lot of pressure he's really got to get this thing going this year doesn't he well he does I, I think terry it's time that he translated those solid numbers into into wins and that just hasn't happened i mean the big deal on aaron is it's easy it's been the turnover and not via the interception i mean he just put the ball on the ground way too many times last year just dropped it and, and after talking to him he seems determined to get that short up and more than ever, fellas, I, I've never seen Aaron Brooks with a chip on his shoulder uh, like he's got right now. And whether that helps him going into the ball game today or not, we're about to find out. All right, Tim, that chip should be a key because he is, in fact, the key. Hey, folks, from New Orleans to Chicago and Brian Baldinger. New coach Levy Smith loves Brian Erlacher, but gosh, who wouldn't? But the big question for the Bears, where will the points come from, Baldy? Well, I think it's got to come from the defense. That's where they're loaded up. That's where the talent is. This is Lovey Smith's system to attack the quarterback, create turnovers and sacks. So the offense needs to get more possessions. They got to win the turnover battle and they got to get good field position from their defense because offensively, Rex Grossman starts his fourth game. They're not ready yet. Hey, Baldy, we're, I'm the only Baldy at Fox. I don't know how you got that nickname, Baldy. All right, unless that's a toupee, my friend. <laughs> Quickly, the Lions. A, a, Lions a Lions, a team I absolutely am in love with. And I think it's because Matt Millen, their GM there, has put together two great drafts. Mariucci now has to get this team to win on the road. 24, they have lost in a row. What do you think? It's going to happen today? They're going to win? Well, I think, Terry, they should win today. They're the better team. The only way they lose today is if they beat themselves. They turn the ball over. This team is going to start seven number one draft picks. The talent is here. They've got that dangerous word of potential hanging over their head. How quickly it comes around is going to determine the fate of the Lions. If it starts today, this team could get hot in a hurry because they got some young, good talent in this offense. All right, Baldy, thank you very much. Howie Long in the studio said, hair, hair to Terry Bradshaw. Hey, folks, uh, oh, another funny. thing that's to look funny. for today and all season long, in <laughs> fact, will be the emphasis on the five-yard chuck rule. Now, for clarification on that, TB and I are headed over to the football field to join Howie and the coach. Hey, Jimmy. JB, if preseason's any indication at all, the viewers are going to see more penalties on the defensive backs. And the reason for that is in the playoffs last year, the offensive-minded coaches in this league felt like the receivers were getting mugged and they were breaking an old rule, the illegal chuck. 
and within five yards, there's not going to be any change. You know, the defensive back can still redirect the receiver. He can still bang on him. He can do everything except hold him. Now, the real change comes after five yards. And, Howie, if you'll be my defensive back and we well, get to... the reason for the change is why? Because of the AFC and NFC oh, championship. The championship In particular, games. Indianapolis versus Against New, New England. England. That's They'll where they got mugged. The competition committee. So right. now we got a wide receiver. Let's yeah, go TB here. can be the wide receiver. And, JB, why don't you be an official All with right. me? Get your jacket we'll off, just Baldy. See. <laughs> and this is going to be coming after five yards if we'll have TB... Take a slow release coming on. Hey. Can still jam. Can everything's fine. Everything. But then after five yards, you cannot bump. That's a foul. You cannot arm bar. That's illegal. You cannot cut off. Oh yeah, that's illegal. And the number one thing you cannot hold. And this is the most blatant and the easiest one to call it. The officials will throw that flag. In fact, Marty Schottenheimer put boxing gloves on his defensive backs to make sure they didn't hold. Here's the bump. Then we got the arm bar. How he's loving it. Then we've got the cutoff. And then we got the hold. Now, obviously, if the ball is in the air, it's going to be pass interference. All of these are first downs. And so it's going to really have an impact on the game. Now, they said you can touch, you can feel, but you cannot redirect the receiver. But because it's a reemphasis of an existing rule, how the officials received that criti critique of their officiating last year, the year before, is going to be key. And JB, that's what every coach told me. He said, hey, if the, if the officials will call it all the same way, we can deal with it. Will they? No, it's going to be hard there early. All right, folks. Hey, folks, from now on, you, the fan, will decide which topic we'll cover on our Fox Field. Here are the choices for next week. Would you like to see the boys explain the Patriots' complicated three-man front defense, Howie Long, show us how to defend Michael Vick up front, or break down the Redskins' counter-gap running game? All you need to do is log on to FoxSports.com on MSN and cast your vote. State Farm covers the field. Brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Providing insurance and financial services. All right, and we have a lot more to cover in today's show, so let's check out what else is on tap. Still to come on Fox NFL Sunday. Joe Gibbs' success is documented in D.C. Three Super Bowl titles with three different QBs and induction into Pro Football's Hall of Fame. So what does Gibbs have to prove after 12 years away from the gridiron? Pam Oliver chronicles the return of one of Washington's most decorated chief executives. Then... It's the rage and sensation that's taken the nation. It's 10 yards with TV. Today's victim, the single season sack record holder, Michael Strahan. Can we ever have a civil conversation, you and I? <laughs> Plus, Dion's primed to make his return as a nickelback. Our fellas offer their two cents on his comeback. Everything I've ever touched in life, I've added to. I haven't um, detracted from. Also, Frank weighs in on the Ricky Williams saga, and Jillian drops the forecast old school style. That's all coming up on Fox NFL Sunday.